Very important disclaimer. All speech in this video has been generated by a machine learning model and is only an impression of the original talented speaker. The video is an educational demo and a testament of how far this technology have reached. It means the voice you just heard is not real. The speech is generated by text-to-speech synthesis methods. The output audio is then fed into another machine learning model to conform to the nuances of speech, such as tone, pitch, and frequency, to match as close as possible to the original speaker. There are no malice, misdirection, or fraud intentions present in this video. That being said, let's start watching the demo. Hello, and welcome to this video on the SD card module and the ESP32. While the ESP32 module is a powerful microcontroller designed for IoT applications, combining these modules can create a robust data logging and storage system. This video will cover the points below, a shopping list of hardware needed for a basic setup, an overview of the wire connections between devices, and lastly we'll go through a code example that can be uploaded to the ESP32. First, let's look at the capabilities of the SD card module. It has the slot designed for micro SD cards, which negates the need for any adapters. It communicates with other devices through the SPI protocol. Next on the list is a crowd favorite, the ESP32. We briefly discussed it earlier, but we will be using the dev kit version 1 today. Then, we need a prototyping board, commonly known as a breadboard to connect the modules. Additionally, it enables us to add extra sensors for more advanced setups. To power up the ESP32 and connect the modules, we will require a power supply and wires. For ease of use in this basic setup, a USB power bank will be utilized. The ESP32 has a voltage regulator built into the board that can regulate higher voltages down to a safe operating voltage. Exceeding this voltage could damage the board or the voltage regulator. Therefore, it's always a good idea to check the specifications of your ESP32. No one wants to see smoke coming out of their favorite microcontroller. Finally, with all the components in hand, it's time to combine them into a complete assembly. Assembly time! Um, excuse me, who are you, and what are you doing in the middle of the demo? Don't you worry, just give me some space. I am a professional, and I know what needs to be done here. Where are those friggin' wires? Ah, oh, there they are. Let's put you right there for now. Are you sure you got this Mr. Professional? Listen, man, it is your demo. It's your world, but let me tell you something. I hate to break it to you, uh, I forgot the SD card module. Why is this so complicated? This looks nothing like the diagrams. Okay, this goes here, and that goes there. Uh, what the what now? No, 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 uh, ah, uh, jeez, it looks like all downhill from here. All right, that's it. No more of this nonsense. Let's review the schematics. It's a pretty straightforward setup to follow. In this example, the CS pin on the SD card module is connected to D5. The SCK, MISO, and MOSI pins on the SD card module are connected to pins D18, D19, and D23, respectively. Now let's review the Arduino code. This is just a basic code example designed to demonstrate simple functions. The setup card function establishes a connection and ensures the board has mounted the card. It prints helpful information, such as the card type and disk capacity. Please notice how the function returns a boolean. That way, in production setups, you can add logic to alert the user that the mounting card procedure had failed by maybe lighting a red LED. The update file function is written to log the milliseconds from the ESP32 every second. With a maximum limit of 3,600 iterations, that equates to 60 seconds times 60 minutes to make up a whole hour of logging. Now let's upload the Arduino sketch to the ESP32. This will take a few seconds up to a few minutes to compile. Then the compiled code will be uploaded to the memory of the ESP32. After the code uploads, let the ESP32 start data logging for an hour. Then review the serial monitor output, and write on cue as discussed before, the card type and capacity are printed from the setup card function. Take note of the timestamp of the first log value of milliseconds. Specifically, it occurred at 46 minutes and 6 seconds past 7 p.m., and the log value is 59. To find the timestamp of the last log value, 
scroll down to the end of the log, which is exactly one hour later than the time when we instructed the code to stop logging and close the file. And to confirm everything worked as expected, let's open the text file saved on the SD card, and without a shadow of a doubt the first value is 59, and the last is 3599186. As we reach the culmination of this demonstration, thank you for watching. I hope that you have found this video informative. Should you have any further inquiries, please do not hesitate to share them in the comments section. Thank you.